Strike fans, it's Jay Calderon with 12rounder.com, and I'm here giving you the aftermath to Frankie Gavin versus Leonard Bundu, as well as the heavyweight clash that happened on the same card between Lucas Brown and Andre Rudenko. Both pretty interesting fights for their own reasons. Uh, I'll start with the heavyweight fight as that happened first. Uh, Brown earned a unanimous decision victory over the previously unbeaten Rudenko, and uh, it was a pretty interesting fight because it it sort of confirmed what we some of the things we did know about Brown, but at the same time gave us a little glimpse at some of the slight wrinkles that are developing in his game. On the one hand, starting with the positives, he did show a bit more use of the jab, which is very good for a big man. It slows down the pace, and he is a big guy. It also allows for him to set up those power shots, which he's known for. And it, it again while slowing down the pace, allows him to keep scoring. Because that's a lot of times a big guy's problem. He'll be waiting to score with that big shot, but isn't doing enough in the meantime. It can let Brown slip away like Brown was doing a bit of in the beginning of that fight, until he started using that jab a little more often. It wasn't the best jab, but if he can build on it, it's certainly a good thing. The other wrinkle that I noticed a little bit in his game was that, for a big guy, he has a fairly decent understanding of how he should pace himself. And that's a good thing. You want to be able to ensure that you're going to have enough energy to close the show out strong, which for the most part I felt he did. I certainly thought he won a fairly close and competitive fight, so he did close the show out uh, uh, fairly strong, and he did that by, again, jabbing and throwing up, uh, 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 sorry, loading up with some of his shots when he needed to, putting a bit more pressure on, and avoiding some of the big shots that Rudenko was taking or uh, throwing. And Rudenko was was also able to take a big shot, so it showed some patience for Brown not to get frustrated. Those are a couple of things that I noticed that were signs of slight improvements in his game. Of course, the drawbacks are the same as they've always been when it comes to Brown. He doesn't have the greatest technical ability. He is a crude fighter at times, and these are things he's admitted himself. So there's going to come times where he's going to have to... where he's going to have to perhaps dig a little too deep. Maybe he'll get brought down to depths that just don't necessarily ex exist in his well of skills. Someone like, say, for for example, Brian Jennings, who you could say what you want about how he beat Mike Perez, was able to sustain whatever it was that he was doing in that fight. And in my opinion, that's what won him the fight. I don't know how well Brown would handle something like that. Of course, Jennings himself would have to be able to handle the power, but if he's able to, that's a long night of work for Brown, and probably not a successful one in the end. So those are certain things he will have to improve upon. But nonetheless, a decent little fight, decent win. And uh, then we move on to the main event. Gavin was the uh, betting favorite. I picked him if you listen to the quick picks that are uh, somewhere on this channel. You can check that out. Bundu was about what I expected from the little bit that I did see of him. Admittedly, I didn't know exactly what he was, but he was a pressure fighter from from all accounts. The, uh, the issue was that... He was a bit better than some might have suspected, myself certainly. And Gavin, on the other hand, while he could be just as good as anyone might have thought originally, the fact of the matter is, you need to have more of an overall game to beat certain fighters. You know, you can't just rely on the one dimension of your game that has been successful against the previous opponents to work against every single opponent. That's just not realistic. Every fighter... Even someone like Golovkin, who is obviously known for his power, has to have extra little bits and pieces in place. He has to be able to cut off that ring, put his feet in the right position, keep his balance in, in check, have his coordination there, pick his shots properly. They, these, all these things have to be in place. And if you're going to be a master boxer, you have to be able to have at least enough pop to keep your opponents off honest when the going gets a little tougher. And Gavin is, if you're going to have one criticism that's truly stands out about the kid is that he doesn't necessarily have that sort of pop. He doesn't have a lot of knockouts, and he didn't seem at all to bother Bundu with any of his shots. Bundu, to his credit, is a good fighter, and again, probably better than most people credited him. But at the same time, you still have to have that pop. That's why a guy like Mayweather is underappreciated in one respect, because all these guys that say they're going to walk in and they're mow them down always tend to have a more, what, what I might call an in-ring change of heart. They always seem to grow a little more timid as the fight wears on, and there's a reason for that, because while he's not known for it, Mayweather can bang a little bit. He was a knockout artist at 130 and 135 pounds, so he does have the ability to, to punch at least enough to keep 
those guys that were going to rush in and completely destroy him to keep them honest. Gavin needs to either develop that power or he has to develop what he does do well to the point that he doesn't need to do anything else. And that's a very difficult ask. But the positives, a rematch makes total sense. And in this case, he's the younger guy. So while the rule is rematches tend to go about the same way they did in the first place except quicker, the exception to that rule would be, of course, a young fighter that has enough time to learn just enough while the older fighter, Bundu's 39, might not be able to do that much better. This might be the best version of him. It's hard to imagine he gets better at this age. A good example of that would be uh, Chavez Martinez. Martinez, of course, at this point, I don't think would be favored to beat Chavez, yet, you know, did okay in that first fight until the 12th round, of course. And by okay, obviously, he was clearly winning the fight, but that 12th round changed a lot of things, and I don't think most people would be picking him now. So there are exceptions when age comes into play. But the rematch is there, and he does have the chance to potentially improve upon it. Bundu might always be the sort of guy that could trouble him, but that, you know, remains to be seen. In any event, congratulations to Bundu. Pulled off a pretty solid upset, and um, certainly a candidate for upset of the year up until this point. But, you know, all that having been said, pretty good night of fights. Obviously, we have Saturday's fights coming up, obviously, tomorrow, and I'll be giving you the aftermath on those as well. Uh, be sure to visit 12rounder.com. Uh, follow on Twitter at 12 Rounder Boxing, and of course, like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Love to hear from you in the comments. What did you think of the fights? Did you agree or disagree with the decisions? What was your scorecard? All that sort of stuff. Love to hear it. Till next time, enjoy the fights.